Welcome to the show. I'm Jonathan, and today is part two of the Van Allen Belts. In this episode, we look at how we travel to the moon despite the Van Allen Belts being full of radiation. If you want to know what these belts of radiation are and why they exist, then be sure to watch part one first. I'll be sure to include a link in the description down below. Let's get started. How did we travel to the moon with all this radiation? It should be impossible, right? For some of you that seem to go around the internet looking for things to hate watch, <laughs> you'll say, we never went to the moon. But you're wrong, and there are many groups unrelated to NASA that have visually confirmed we went. For everyone else, let's get into the facts. As we established in part one, they are essentially like two donuts wrapped around our planet. Van Allen and his team discovered these belts with the support of NASA's Explorer and Pioneer satellites. The space race was pushing us to get some people to the moon, so Van Allen himself actually suggested clearing them away by setting a nuclear bomb off near the outer belt. Look, he wasn't always full of good ideas, okay? Enter the fishbowl events, which is essentially what my other episode is about, where we set off nuclear bombs in space, as Van Allen suggested. The problem? They added more radiation to the belts. The Soviet tests in 1962 added a million times more radiation to the inner belt and destroyed satellites. Oops! By the time NASA was ready to send people to the moon, they clearly already knew about these belts. They knew that certain levels of electrons and protons were unlikely to be harmful to humans and less likely to penetrate the aluminum of the spacecraft. It's really just basic science at this point. Think about your microwave at home and how that radiation doesn't come blasting out to melt your face when you're staring at your frozen dinner for one. If we understand this, then we can adjust the shielding on the spacecraft, no problem. And side note, in the 1970s, there was a scare of radiation from microwaves resulting in reduced cells. Van Allen himself had to give a statement as he was the leading authority on radiation at this time. There is not a shred of scientific evidence that microwaves at the low intensities radiated from microwave ovens have any effect whatsoever on human health. Anyway, back to the belts. We knew that the belts were big, chunky donuts, and donuts have holes. Right at the north and south poles, we have clear pathways, and those would be ideal locations to launch out of, right? I mean, just avoid the belts altogether? That's convenient. But this would have used up too much fuel in the process, so they couldn't do that. But Earth rotates on an axis, right? They just had to plan their path off of Earth to maximize fuel efficiency while planning their ideal way through all the radiation of those belts. It all comes down to math, geometry, smart people stuff. Meaning by understanding the challenge, NASA was able to design the translunar injection orbit in a way that they would avoid the belt's most dangerous areas. In fact, Apollo 11 bypassed the inner belt completely and only passed through the weak bits of the outer one. If we look at this graphic, we can see the flight path of Apollo 11. It left Earth here and then stayed around 200 kilometers above the surface as it orbited the Earth a couple times. Then, as things started to align and planning for where the moon will be, they headed out here, avoiding the inner Van Allen belt completely and brushing through the outer belt for about a total of 30 minutes. On the way back to Earth, it was another set of perfected measurements to come back in right here and only stayed in the outer Van Allen belt for about 60 minutes. Look, there's a reason why we spend a lot of time planning any launch of anything into space access of the Earth, rotation of the Earth, the orbit of the Moon is inclined 5 degrees, the Van Allen belts, blah blah blah. In the end, it's all about smart people that are good with math making decisions to get from point A to point B. There is no straight line in space travel, and when things line up, you better be ready. The longest time spent in the radiation of the Van Allen belts by the Apollo team was 60 minutes on re-entry, and that was in the weak areas but how much radiation did they actually take? So if you're still with me and you understand that we can travel to space and we have been to the moon, then let's talk about how much radiation actually happened, especially with that 60 minute span on re-entry. They received 0.18 rem. A rem is a that, which is the measurement for the dose of radiation absorbed by human tissue. If you were to go to the hospital and get a full body CT scan, you would get between 2 to 10 rem. What about radiation sickness? Well, that would be around 100 rem. 
Uh, the Chernobyl operators and first responders on the evening of that accident received 70,000 to 1.3 million REM in a very short period of time. It is generally believed that humans exposed to about 500 REM of radiation all at once will likely die without medical treatment. If it is within days or weeks, then there are surprisingly few effects. The Apollo command module was built to reduce the effect of radiation because we knew that the belts were a thing, obviously, but also in case of any solar storms. It was able to reduce 400 rem on the outside to less than 35 rem on the inside. Oh, and check out this letter sent to and then replied and signed by James Van Allen himself back in 2004. It's in regards to a quote by Van Allen. The recent Fox TV show, which I saw, is an ingenious and entertaining assemblage of nonsense. The claim that radiation exposure during the Apollo missions would have been fatal to the astronauts is only one example of such nonsense. In the end, to those that deny our landing on the moon and say, then how did we get through the Van Allen belts? Well, how exactly are you going to reference those belts, but not listen to the man that discovered them? If you really think that it's all a lie, then why would NASA allow Van Allen to work with them? Why would they tell anyone about these belts? If they wanted to lie to you, then they would just kept that part a secret. I mean, seriously, do better. And look, thanks to the twin Van Allen probes, we have learned that the radiation levels of the Van Allen belts are not nearly to the level we originally thought they were, but still can be dangerous. Science is cool because we learn and adapt all the time. More information all the time is a good thing. Otherwise, we would all still think the Earth was flat. <laughs> Could you imagine thinking that the Earth is flat? <laughs> Be sure to watch this video here to learn the answer to the question, why don't we go to the moon anymore? As always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today?